And I welcome everyone to Press TV's news review program where we get in depth in one of the day's top stories. The Afghan Defense Ministry says that the government forces have killed more than 300 Taliban militants in battles across several provinces over the past 24 hours. Local officials in the province of Helmand also said that Afghan Air Force has intensified its airstrikes against Taliban hideouts. The Taliban rejected the government's claims. Clashes have escalated between the militants and government forces since the 1st of May when the U.S. announced withdrawing its remaining troops from the country. The Taliban has seized dozens of districts in recent weeks. And now joining us for the program is Mr. Zafar Bangesh, Director from the Institute of Contemporary Islamic Thought from Toronto, Canada, and Mr. Ken O'Keefe, U.S. Marine veteran, joining us from Orlando, Florida. Hello, gentlemen. Nice to have you both on the program. I guess we'll start there in the States with you, Mr. Ken O'Keefe. Um, we see uh, Afghanistan today. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe, uh, the, the Taliban in numbers, the membership is higher than ever. We're seeing them controlling uh, more land, uh, more territory than ever. We're seeing uh, opium cultivation at the highest it's ever been. What happened in the last 20 years that the U.S. was there and now that it's leaving? Well, I mean, you know, this is where it's always critical for us to go back to the beginning. I mean, the whole purpose, the whole stated intent of going into Afghanistan in what is now the longest standing war in American history was the pretext that uh, Osama bin Laden was hiding in uh, Tora Bora and we had to go in there to fight this so-called war on terror based on a false flag known as 9-11. And for that, we are still there all these years later. Uh, how many are dead? I don't even like breaking it down to numbers, but it's a massive number of people that are dead, never mind the lives destroyed from the loved ones lost and the communities wiped off the map. Um, all of this on the back of a love eye. So what I'm waiting for is the prosecutions according to international law of the war criminals who've committed massive crimes against humanity for what has taken place in Afghanistan and continues to this day. And in fact, even my partner has a story about his experience in Afghanistan. So it's not even just the Afghanis, it's Americans who are being sent off as cannon fodder to go fight these bogus wars and risk our lives for the bankers. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Zafar Bangesh, welcome to the program. Sir, your initial thoughts, please. Well, you know, uh, you mentioned that the Afghan um, Defense Ministry has made certain claims. Uh, I think we have to take these claims uh, with a little bit of skepticism. Uh, because the situation in Afghanistan remains very fluid. Um, as you mentioned, the Taliban have captured in recent weeks a number of districts. In fact, according to the figures that I have seen, at least 100 districts across Afghanistan, particularly in northern Afghanistan, as well as in western Afghanistan, whereas the Taliban strength lies essentially in the south and in the southeast. So that means they are making progress even in the north and in the west of the country. And as soon as the last of the uh, American soldiers are out, we know that they have already abandoned the Bagram Air Base, which is the largest air base in Afghanistan, that uh, the situation would become uh, even worse. And as uh, Ken pointed out, uh, this has been a, a genocidal war against the, the people of Afghanistan. These war criminals really need to be brought to justice. They have destroyed their country, a very poor country that was virtually living in the Stone Age. It has been bombed beyond the Stone Age. People's mud huts have been destroyed. Wedding parties have been bombed and killed. School children have been killed. And, and these horrendous war crimes that have been perpetrated basically to make profit for these arms manufacturers and these other criminals that have been ruling America and telling lies to the American people. They have destroyed thousands of American lives. There are tens of thousands of American war veterans that are uh, handicapped, that have been damaged, their bodies have been damaged physically. And in fact, uh, they have been virtually abandoned by the American government, despite the fact that they were sent to wage a war in a distant land on a complete lie. And so in that sense, although uh, the war may be theoretically winding down in Afghanistan, although I doubt very much if the American warlords are going to give up uh, their war mongering. 
but they won't be uh, their presence, physical presence inside Afghanistan definitely uh, would go down. But we'll have to see as to exactly what happens as we proceed. There, is, there are real risks of a civil war erupting in Afghanistan, which would be another tragedy, and that would the cost, of course, would be borne by the people of Afghanistan and its fallout on countries in the neighborhood like Pakistan and Iran, etc. Thank you. And, and Ken O'Keefe, I mean, over the last 20 years, there have been, uh, regard, I mean, aside from all the lives lost, all the Afghan civilian lives lost, there's been, you know, a, a huge uh, number on American lives as well. And so, what, uh, American parents, when they ask policymakers, why? Why did my daughter or son, what did they die for when they went over to Afghanistan? What kind of believable or plausible story can U.S. lawmakers, can U.S. Uh, politicians tell these grieving parents that's even plausible to any degree? You know, this is, this is the challenge, really, is, is facing the truth, because in order to face the truth about America, you have to face this uh, terrifying reality for most, which is that the illusion, the illusion that your nation is the greatest in the world, the, the, you know, the, the beacon of virtuous uh, attributes like freedom and so-called democracy and, and all of this, that it is a lie. It's an illusion, and, and I, I can't help but think of Jack Nicholson and A Few Good Men when he's being interrogated about what we do in war and what is inherent in war. It's a nasty business. You don't want your kids being there. You really don't. And, and many who come back, if they come back, they don't, you can't recognize them. They're not the same. There's 22 American service members a day committing suicide. The homeless epidemic is running rampant through America right now, unreported, but the veterans that fill the streets of this nation is a testament to how much the shallowness of Americans who might say, thank you for your service. I hear this all the time. <laughs> you know, It's like, wait a second, how about we take care of those who gave service, who fought for freedom? I know what it's like. I know what it's like. The police stole all of my property two, three months ago. I'm fighting to get it back with the law. You know, this is the way I, I if, if we don't have the law, what do we have then? What then? You know, I'm the guy who doesn't want violence. I'm the guy who wants an end to weapons of mass destruction. I'm the, I'm the guy who wants prosecutions for the war criminals and the criminals against humanity. That's what I want. I don't see any other option. Justice. I mean, this is what must happen if we're to have any real healing in this world. Thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. And Mr. Bangesh, so basically now that uh, Afghanistan is supposedly, supposedly going to be left to its own uh, devices, I mean, we see, we see that the, the Taliban have such, I mean, I don't know what happened over the last 20 years there between NATO and U.S. forces where they pushed so many young men into the bosoms of this militant group. But basically, they're very strong now, and there's a big threat that they might even try to embark on taking over Kabul. Do you see that happening, and would you, how do you see the future of this country unfolding now that NATO and the U.S. are on their way out? Well, you see, when a foreign occupation force or forces, in fact, there wasn't just one country, not the United States, with all of its allies, about 60 other countries that had joined the war on Afghanistan, and when they go and bomb uh, people's villages and homes indiscriminately, killing innocent people, naturally, anybody who stands up and uh, he says, or any group that stands up and says that they want to fight these foreign occupiers, the people are going to join them. So that's how the ranks of the Taliban have expanded, and they have grown, and they want to see these foreigners off their backs. Now, with respect to what's likely to happen is that uh, unfortunately, even after 20 years of America's so-called training, this superpower training them, giving them all kinds of weapons, the Afghan National Army is simply not capable of fighting. It is unmotivated. In fact, in many instances, these uh, gains that the Taliban are making are precisely because the Afghan National Army uh, troops surrender their weapons and they join the Taliban. The same is happening with you know, local administrations, etc. With respect to Kabul, I foresee that perhaps within the next few months, the Taliban probably would uh, make an attempt to take over Kabul. Regrettably, there's going to be resistance and there, there are going to be killings. They will ultimately triumph. I don't think that that is, they can be uh, stopped because they are well organized. They have a lot of support from among the people. 
and, uh, and uh, Ashraf Ghani's government and others, etc., unfortunately, will simply not be able to resist the takeover. What I wish is that the Taliban will be able to uh, include the other people in their future government so that all the various groups in Afghanistan would be represented so that the people of Afghanistan can have peace. Thank you, sir. We have 40 seconds left. Mr. Ken O'Keefe, your final thoughts, please. I absolutely agree. I, I, I love the analysis. I, I completely agree. And I really pray for the, the Afghani people that, you know, it, they, we think of it as a monolithic thing. It's not. There's so many different cultures mixing within this region, this, this area known as Afghanistan. And I pray that they have the same thing that, that, that all of us really want. We want to be able to live in our own communities, to be safe, to be able to live a dignified life, to provide opportunities for our children. And have to uh, and have the ability to really just enjoy life without the tyranny and the yoke of tyranny wrapped around our neck. So I hope that they have that, that they have a representative government that respects the regional uh, differences between the peoples within Afghanistan. I really do. Thank you, gentlemen, both of you. Stay safe. It was a pleasure having you both on. Mr. Zafar Bangesh, you're joining us from Toronto. Mr. Ken O'Keefe, joining us from Orlando, Florida. And viewers, that's a wrap for this segment of your Press TV's news review program. Thank you for tuning in and bye-bye uh, for now.